Welcome to See Arthritis at the Canadian Rheumatology Association and Arthritis Health Professions Association Annual Scientific Meeting. I'm Maya. I'm the program coordinator at Arthritis Consumer Experts and also a person living with rheumatoid arthritis. I am so very excited to be joined today by Kim Ari. Kim Ari is a registered dietitian who has extensive experience counseling patients who are seeking weight management advice. She is the author with Dr. Michael Starr of the Complete Arthritis Health Diet Guide and Cookbook, and she also co-led a workshop session at the CRA and AHPA meeting. Thank you so much for being on our program today, Kim. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to talk with you. So I did give a bit of a brief introduction, but I would love it if you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you're involved in rheumatology or arthritis. Well, I guess I, I got involved in rheumatology uh, uh, and arthritis a long time ago, mostly for, for, through my clients that had actually osteoarthritis, uh, because so many of them were coming in to see me um, and their doctors had asked them to lose weight in preparation for either a, a replacement, knee replacement surgery, or because just, you know, your, your back, your knees, your leg, your something won't hurt as much if you don't have as much weight on your joints. I also got interested because I had so many of my family members that were, you know, struggling with managing their arthritis. And then I got a whole new set of patients that came to see me because of their inflammatory arthritis and wondering how we could manage that. So ultimately, I, I got uh, interested and um, that led to writing the book with Dr. Starr and, and doing a lot more research. As I mentioned, you did present at the CRA meeting, and I'm wondering if you can share with us what some of the key takeaway messages from your presentation were. Um, I guess some of the key takeaway messages is, is especially for, for my clients, um, the key takeaway message I like to give everybody is it's really important to work toward being at your best weight. Mm -hmm. So to throw out that number, like there's some ideal number somewhere that you're supposed to be, put that aside and think about, I want to be my best self. So what is that? I want to be my healthiest. I want to have the best eating habits I can have. I want to have the best sleep habits I can have because sleep plays a role in in everything, right? Yeah. Um, I want to have the best exercise habits I can have because that, you know, exercising reduces inflammation, keeps your joints, your muscles strong. So not as much stress on your joints. Important to have good exercise habits. I want to have the best stress management habits I can have so I can manage my stress and not go off and manage my stress by eating a tub of ice cream. And and if I do all that, then whatever weight I'm going to be, that's going to be the best place for me. Right. So sort of maybe recognizing that there's different best weights for different people. different Exactly. Concepts. And there might be a different best weight at a different time in your life. Mm. You know, maybe it was a best weight that was really amazing when you were 30, but is less amazing when you're 60. Um, and so you, you, again, we have to learn how to roll with that. And we have to, to learn how to focus on having the best eating habits we can have and the best exercise habits we can have and the best lifestyle that we can have. Right. I really like that perspective. Um, and then what are some of the ways that the food we eat can influence our disease journey with arthritis? Well, so it can be... Um, in a lot of ways. And I think it's really important to recognize that yes, food is one of the reasons we will have more inflammation. Um, and I wish I could tell people that I know of the top three foods that cause inflammation. And like, if you just take those out of your diet, life would be beautiful. Uh, but I think what we're understanding more and more is that um, eating to reduce inflammation is about uh, the, whole dietary pattern. Okay, it's about everything you eat. It's not about taking away one food. And if I just take out dairy products, but I eat all the other junk I want, I will be fine. Or if I just take out whatever it is, pick one, uh, and, and, and life will be fine. It's about saying no, I want to make a concerted effort to have the best nutrition I can have. Because I want to make sure that I'm eating 
the healthiest food. So I, I usually have top five things I get my clients to try and do when they're trying to reduce inflammation. And the first one, and, and I always talk about what you need to add to your diet as opposed to what you need to take out. So try to focus on making sure you're eating enough uh, fish and getting enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet, because we know omega-3 fatty acids can help really reduce the amount of um, uh, inflammation in your body. Um, the other thing we want to do, because we know uh, this is going to help reduce inflammation, is make sure you're eating whole grains and you're eating foods that are going to contain enough fiber, because consuming adequate amounts of fiber is going to help reduce the amount of inflammation in your body. It's kind of maybe you see a little bit of a trend here. Um, another thing we want to do is uh, consume more um, uh, vegetable protein. Mm. Again, because we know animal protein, uh, especially from uh, red meat, seems to increase the amount of inflammation. So if you're consuming vegetable protein, you're going to have a little bit less inflammation. Right. And we want to load up on vegetables and fruits, because again, vegetables and fruits are going to give you some of that fiber. They're going to give you all those neat phytonutrients that could be antioxidant. So that's really important. Uh, so you want to load up on vegetables and fruits. And then the last thing is also to load up on some herbs and spices, because we know most of the different spices, herbs, spices will all contain some of those plant chemicals that help to reduce inflammation. So it also makes your food taste great. So added bonus. So those are usually the top five things I ask clients to try and work toward. Right. You know, I have to say, I've never heard that last one before, but I really like it about the herbs and spices. That's, that's a great one. If I think it's really important. I have way too many clients that come to see me and their idea of eating healthy food uh, is, you know, my, my piece of uh, baked chicken that's got no seasoning on it. Mm -hmm. And then I have my, my vegetable that I steamed with no seasoning. And then I have my steamed, you know, grain whole, with no seasoning. And then, and then, you know, like, I don't wonder why they turn around and go, oh, I really want to eat something tasty. Let's go eat something less healthy that they associate with being tasty. So let's focus on making our food really tasty and oh, by the way, isn't that fun? Most of those herbs and spices actually contain chemicals that are going to help our body to reduce our level of inflammation. Whoa, bonus. Definitely, definitely. Um, so, so one of the things is, in general, as a patient, you know, living with disease, it can be uh, difficult to make lifestyle changes. And especially uh, during a uh, a global crisis like COVID, you know, it can be extra difficult um, for patients like myself to make those lifestyle changes, uh, especially diet changes, or stay motivated to keep up with them. Even if you start them, you know, as you said, you can think, I'm feeling stressed out right now, I need to um, eat a bag of chips, or that's something I personally do <laughs> quite a oh, bit. Yes, I, I have done that myself as well. <laughs> so, so yeah, I would love to hear from you. Um, if you can offer any suggestions of how to address these challenges with um, motivation and just getting started with it in the first place during a time like the present. So I guess to get started, the one, one thing I always mention to clients is remember nudges are just as good, a series of small nudges are just as good and maybe even more effective than a big sweeping change. And so sometimes you're better to say, you know what, I realize, let's take um, the fish, for example, I, uh, I don't eat a lot of fish. So maybe one small thing you could do is buy a can of salmon and say once a week, I'm going to have canned salmon salad in my lunch. Like that's a really small change. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of a no brainer in, in terms that it's not hard to do. It's not like I have to learn a recipe and I have, you know, mm -hmm. I even like go to the local Subway store or submarine sandwich store and buy a sandwich that's made with, you know, canned tuna or canned salmon. And mm -hmm. like that's already better than taking the one sandwich that had cold meats in it. Right. And less costly too to do, you know, a small intervention like that canned tuna or salmon. 
Exactly. And so start off with really tiny interventions. You can build on them. You can turn around and say, oh, well, I've got these cans of salmon here now. What about if I make you know, salmon patties or what if I make salmon loaf or what else could I do with this? But start with something really tiny because that's always easier to build on. Mm -hmm. So if you, we take the example of the herbs and spices. If you're somebody who doesn't like, oh, you're not used to using them, but you say, well, let's try with some of the ones that are maybe more mild. Uh, let me try putting half the amount they call for in the recipe till I get used to the taste. Little nudges, you can always build on them. Right. The other thing that you mentioned I think is really important is yes, I think in the real world, if you live in the real world, there's gonna be a day where you're gonna say, oh, I don't know, everybody around me is eating chips, I'm gonna have some too. Or if nobody's around you because you're, we're in lockdown, I'm in lockdown right now. So woe is me, I'm in lockdown. I'm gonna comfort myself with my bag of chips uh, or whatever. I think it's really important to say, okay, it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It doesn't, I shouldn't, there's no guilt or anything about this. The important is for me to say, oh, that was really good for my mental health. And now we move on. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things I've learned from living with people who are naturally thin is they don't stress about those things. They don't do this all or nothing. Oh my God, I, I, I went off my diet and I, I shouldn't be doing this. So now I messed up and I'm going to eat badly for the next three months till I, they just kind of go, oh, wow, I ate that yesterday. Hmm, that's cool. And they just keep on going with the rest of the, the habits they wanted to do. So really forgive yourself, be nice to yourself and just say, wow, that was really helpful. I ate those chips. I feel a lot better. And now my next meal is going to be back to normal. Right. Back to where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. The third tip I'll have of just really quick is to reassess if something's not working, maybe it's the habit that's not the right habit or the right structure for you. Right? If you say, oh, um, I want to start eating fish and you try eating the canned fish, let's say if we go back to our canned salmon and you go, oh, but I don't really like that. But you realize when you think about it, you really love um, you really love shrimp instead. So maybe your solution is to buy some frozen shrimp, uh, you know, one of those frozen shrimp rings, and eat some frozen shrimp, a few shrimp, a couple of times a week. Maybe that's your solution, or, or buy the smoked salmon and say, I really like smoked salmon. I'll take smoked salmon on a bagel with some some capers and onions. A couple of times a week. So it's not to, to, to always like stand back and go, okay, why is this not working? It's not because I'm bad or imperfect or anything. It's maybe this wasn't the right strategy for me. What can I do to still get my, my fish in, but not choose the canned fish? Hmm. I love those. I think that all of those strategies are really good ways to prevent um, um, the patient from feeling discouraged from not being able to starting with those small changes or having personalized changes or forgiving yourself when you don't follow a plan. I, I think that's great because I think that discouragement can then be um, a deterrent for wanting to continue trying to make these changes. So, Yeah, and I think it's so important to understand that it's very normal uh, for you to um, have difficulty with this. This is, this is something that is um, not always easy. We want to remember that we do, um, you know, our mental health is part of the picture. And so sometimes in, in how, you know, people around us are eating differently or, or we're in a situation where we just would like to eat differently. I mean, I have a client who every time he watches a hockey game, he really enjoys, you know, munching on something. And so then the challenge is finding things that he can munch on that are healthier than what he was munching on before. And yet he still, you know, has that experience. 
Right. Yeah. Interesting. For me, my time like that is actually after I do my weekly um, injections of my medication, I psychologically start to feel a bit nauseous afterwards. So I reward myself with um, like a yummy snack or chips to sort of help me feel better after that, like the hockey game. But <laughs> no, but, but I think that's where it also goes back to. I always tell my clients, I want you to nourish yourself. And when you're nourishing yourself, you're nourishing your body and your soul. So mm -hmm. you want to take those things into account. And, and if that is going to help you to, to, to manage your treatment and that whole process, then it was a really important and a really healthy thing for you to do. Hmm. Maybe one day you'll be ready to say, you know, I want to have something, my yummy snack is going to be um, something uber healthy, like, uh, um, you know, a fruit cup with a uh, uh, some amazing um, cinnamon syrup on it or something. Maybe that's going to be your something special, but maybe it's going to stay the other things for now. And that, sh that shouldn't distract from all the other times you're eating that you're making really, really, really healthy choices. Right. So lastly, I'm wondering if there are any last pearls or pieces of advice that you would like to share with our patient audience. Well, I, I, I think the most important thing is always remember, as I said, it's so important to nourish your body. Mm -hmm. Your body needs these nutrients to help build your immune system. It needs these nutrients to help build other nutrients to help build muscles, other nutrients um, that are there to help you to um, make the right neurochemicals so that you're going to be happier instead of sadder. So for all these reasons, it's really important to choose foods that are going to give you vitamins and minerals and nourishment. But while you're doing that, please remember that food is one of the pleasures in life. And so let's make sure that you're really enjoying that. That is wonderful. Last piece of advice. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. So uh, to our audience, thank you for watching. And we are going to be linking Kim's website below so you can learn more um, about this topic and about her book if you would like. And uh, Kim, thank you so much again. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks and you too.